Oh, with me is Nadim Hori, a Syrian analyst formerly of Human Rights Watch. Let me start off with you, Nadim, and give me your assessment of Bashir al-Assad. Well, I mean, it's not a personal opinion. He has been, uh, it's been doc documented, the war crimes and crimes against humanity that he uh, oversaw and that he ordered, uh, the use of chemical weapons against his uh, own population. Now, it's true that we have seen since, two, you know, he has managed to win the conflict on the ground with the assistance and direct involvement of his allies, Russia and Iran. And he, he is today, unfortunately, uh, the benefits uh, of this uh, win because uh, a number of Arab countries led by the United Arab Emirates uh, have decided to normalize with him uh, without any real uh, demands for reforms or accountability. It's interesting. We'll stick with you. The, um, the, the picture's a little bit um, shaky, but we can hear you loud and clear for the time being, Nadim. What, what do you think it is then as the driving factor behind his re-emergence? There are really two, two, uh, two factors. Uh, the first one is over the last few years, Syria has been at the center of a uh, booming drug trade in the region, the Capticon trade. Uh, that actually has directly benefited and was encouraged by the Syrian regime. And a number of countries, notably Gulf countries, would like this trade to stop or be controlled. So in a way, we're asking the uh, fire starter to act as a fireman in this case. And for other countries, notably uh, those that host large number of Syrian refugees like Jordan and Lebanon, the priority there is the return of refugees in the background of an accelerating economic crisis in their countries. Um, and again, these refugees left Syria in the first place, escaping uh, the Assad regime. So uh, it's very typical of Assad's negotiating tactic. He creates the problem. He is responsible for the problem. But then he uses this problem to present himself as a solution to bargain uh, around. It's a really good point. I mean, particularly on the drugs, we're looking at um, Syria, a little known fact, it appears to be a new narco state in the Middle East, a billion, multi-billion dollar empire uh, with this amphetamine, you say, Captagon. Um, one of the issues being discussed, smuggling around that region to try and stop that as well. What does this tell us, do you think, about the power dynamic now in that region? Because it's not just the Arab League summit. Bashar al-Assad potentially will be in the same room, if not the same building, as Britain's Prime Minister, the US President, when it comes to the climate summit of COP28 in Abu Dhabi too. No, that's true. I mean, look, the, uh, I'm, I'm very cynical about the Arab League. I mean, this is a regional organization that is way past its uh, useful uh, life. Uh, it, ha it has become a club of autocrats. And again, this normalization in the region began in 2018 with the United Arab Emirates. Uh, but on another level, there's a real challenge here as well to Western uh, democracies. Uh, they have been very absent uh, on the Syrian file for many, many years. They've been happy and content to uh, delegate this file uh, to regional actors, and regional actors are increasingly, notably Saudi Arabia, asserting their independence and autonomy. So uh, right now, you know, we're seeing firm rhetorical uh, actions from uh, Western democracies. They will not normalize with Bashar al-Assad, but they're not offering any counterpoint.